Today we're gonna to be testing different veins for different types of vein noise. Uh, this is kind of a more popular topic, especially as of recently as more and more veins are coming out to kind of tackle this. Uh, but it is it is wild how loud veins can be. You know, if you're ever in a situation like even an ASA or something where you kind of hear a vein go by you in the distance, it's loud. So what we want to do today is kind of break down different scenarios and talk about different vein noises, maybe what to look out for, some pros and cons of different veins, and just kind of tackle it all and do it kind of in a scientific way the best that we can because we're not scientists and we're doing this in one day. So we're here at the Matthews facility so that we can have about 60 yards to do this testing in, perfectly quiet, and we can actually get some like good looking sound waves because we're gonna get technical. So it's actually just really good uh, coincidence that they have a pile of arrows right here. So it looks like we're mad scientists, but the, we're not, we're not dealing with those. We're dealing with these. So what we have pretty much is a couple different groups that we're going to be testing against each other. So we actually fletch up a bunch of these arrows. Um, we have like, like a uh, control, like ish, like control groups, I guess you could say of different arrows. So we're just gonna run through, compare each arrow by arrow with the different variances we have, and just kind of talk about it and see see what the differences show. So we kind of have it all mapped out. We're gonna be comparing if helical matters for noise, we have a zero degree, five degree. If diameter of arrow matters with the same fletching, different veins in the same helical and then we have some miscellaneous just to show if you're you know one extreme to the next if you know what matters for noise or whatnot in different arrows and this is what we're going to be testing on this is a uh, a really expensive uh, zoom and it's really good at catching audio so we're going to be recording it's at the halfway point so in between we're going to shoot from there the arrow is going to impact from there and we'll have the most amount of gap between the noise of the bow and the noise of the impact to capture the sound wave of the arrow going by. We're gonna chop that sound wave, lay it out, and show you guys all of the different sound waves of different fletchings. So let's turn this on. We are going to do group number one and see what we can get. Let's do, uh, what, what do we wanna do first? I feel like we, we should kind of like ramp up to the grand finale, which I feel like is, is seeing the different veins in the miscellaneous. So maybe let's start with helical. Does helical matter when it comes to noise? Is there enough of a difference in an extreme five degree in just a straight? Let's see. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. We have two six millimeter arrows, one with a five degree helical and a blazer and one with no helical, it's just a straight fletch. Both are blazer veins, both are the same diameter arrow. Let's see if there's any sound difference. I should hit like about the same, right? Um, should hit the target at least. All right, this is the straight vein first. That was pretty loud. Okay, let's compare. Hopefully our audio levels are good enough. What's our password? Okay. So this is no helical. This is helical. Can you tell a difference? on the levels yeah we slowed down this audio from the first one and if we toggle frame by frame the loudest this gets is like negative right there about negative 20. now if we toggle on the helical one. It's peaking out of the right channel at about negative 17 or 18, 
right there. <laughs> so, a little louder. I mean, we can play this over and over again, back in regular speed. That amount of variance is no difference. No. It's it's negligible, no difference. Helical, this is like Mythbusters. It's like, does helical make an arrow louder? Yes, but not enough to hear it. Case closed. I probably already know the answer to this. I just, I think it's good that we're doing it. We're gonna test the diameters, the different diameters of the arrows. Does that matter? We have four millimeter, five millimeter, six millimeter arrows with fletchings, all the same configuration, same helical, same blazer fletching. So let's see if that matters. Zoom is on, correct? Yes. I think it's on. All right, this is, I should go in order, I suppose. Yeah, smallest to largest. This is four millimeter. This is five millimeter. And this is six millimeter. That is a tight knock. Let's see what we got. Okay, this is the shot. Can you hear a difference? Here can I. This is interesting. Yeah, the, there was definitely a difference. There's a the difference, yeah. Okay, so in this, this was number one, which was what, our four millimeter? Our four millimeter peaks at about 17. Our five millimeter peaks at, I wanna say like 18, 19, 18. So one or two less. And our six millimeter clearly peaks at 19 or just below 19. So this is completely opposite of what I was thinking, which now it makes sense. But the four millimeter is a little bit louder than the six millimeter and the five millimeter is right in between the two of them. It's like the bigger arrow displaces the air for the fletchings to go through. Would that make sense? Why would the bigger arrow be a little quieter with the same vein? Well, though, I guess the way I think about why this small arrow would be louder is because there's an outsert, and an the outsert air disrupts be. the outsert disrupts the air, which is then like caught back and drafted essentially behind like the outsert. Does some like weird yeah. thing. So like a straight, a smooth straight arrow in the front that could be it. But then why is the five millimeter louder than the six? We're not scientists here, but let's listen. Let's listen again. I cannot hear a visible difference. Can you hear a visible difference? Mm -hmm. So yet again, slight variation, enough to notice? Nope. On to the next. Now. This is where some variance is going to be. We have a giant fletching, fle fletching, feather fletching. We then have a Max Hunter, AE Max Hunter, which is a very tall vein with a steep helical. Then we have, I forget what, Stealth Vein? An AE Stealth Vein, also really steep helical. Then we have a Tack Vein, really steep, really steep helical. And then our Blazer, which is also really steep helical. We will, I think, have some variance in this for sure. So I'm excited. Let's shoot them. Let's see where they go. And I will note, the main conclusion why we want to do this is because like, yes, different veins probably, we'll see after this test, probably are going to have different, different sounds. And that does matter. 
you know, you think about what does a deer hear? Yes, it can hear the bow, but if you're at a farther distance, you know, like 30, 40, 50, 60, that bow becomes quieter and quieter because it's farther away. But what isn't quieter is the arrow because they can hear it coming to them. So kind of an interesting thought, you know, it's like everyone's like, make the bow quieter, which is yes, but let's make the arrow quieter also. That's really important. This is our boning blazer vein. Probably the most popular vein. Definitely loud. It's a high profile vein. It's gonna be loud. Here is a Max Hunter. Also loud. Arguably louder. I'm gonna say a hypothesis right now. That was a little louder than the blazer. This is our ginormous fletchings, feathers, feathers, fletchings. This one might be quiet, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. That was wild how loud that was. Wild. So this is a tack vein, which um, big big part of their marketing deal is like quiet because it's really stiff. So, which which I think is true. We'll we'll see if that's that's the case. Sounded decent. That was pretty quiet. All right, let's dive in. Let's see what we got. I feel like I'm about to sit down at my beat laboratory. Be real beats. Be real beats. Be beats. Oh, I wonder what one that is. We had five, correct? Mm -hmm. Let's just listen to it. Plain. Okay, we have some variants. You can just see, you know, visually the different peaks. Five very different veins. Okay, so we have vein number one. What was vein number one, the blazer? Yeah. Yes. Vein number one peaks out at 19. Vein number two, which was the Pro Max Max Hunter, Max Hunter peaks out at a little bit higher, about 17. So a little, a little bit louder than the Blazer, which is interesting. The uh, the feathers they peak out at. nine these numbers don't mean anything they're just reference also so a, a a number closer to zero is louder number lower is better or quieter this is the tack vein you know that, that's a good bit lower than 19 so there's 25 and 19 i'd give that like a 20 a 21 so like two, two numbers lower. Wish we had a better way of doing this, but I'm not a, I'm not an audio ma magician or a scientist should have or a chemist. Should have hired our neighbors. Oh yeah, that would have been good. <laughs> Next is the, what was this called? Uh, it's a Max Stealth. Max Stealth, AE Max Stealth. Pretty quiet. We're at like 20, Four. Interesting. Very interesting. We have from loudest. Let's actually let's grab the arrows. Here we go. Loudest to quietest. Based on minute 
little changes. This isn't a lot. Like if you stood and listened, you might be able to hear a difference. You for sure could hear a difference from this guy. The feathers are for sure the loudest, which obviously makes sense. Next is the Max Hunter. L little bit louder than the Blazer. Just a touch. Blazer, a little bit quieter. Our Blazer is our median. Blazer is a great median. We'll, we'll go over some of the features and, and why you should maybe consider one thing over another, like cl closer to the end. We have our tack vein, quiet, but not as quiet. What was this one? The why do I keep forgetting? Max Stealth. Max Stealth. The Max Stealth is actually the quietest by a little bit, which is good. You know, we're literally being as unbiased as possible here. But that is the order. Very interesting. So our conclusion is yes, giant variance between our fletchings. Yes, it does matter. Yes, the material probably matters. The cut matters. But we'll go over more of that later. So we'll do uh, one is quietest. What we're going to do now is four fletch versus three fletch. Does that matter? Does that add any sound noise? We chose the Max Hunter, uh, the noisiest um, of the plastic veins. Figured it'd be a good comparison of just, uh, you know, noise. Because that's what we're doing. Comparing noises. Comparing noises at 8 p.m. on a Friday night. 8 p.m. Wild Friday night. Riley and I are having. <laughs> Okay, this is four fletch. Okay, no fletchings flew off. That took about, it's been under a minute since we fletched it. Okay, I say let's shoot our mixed bag so we can compare also. Okay, as you can see, we kind of have a mixed bag here. I'm going to shoot an old school 23 diameter hunting arrows. Like this is, you know, OG, what you used to hunt with like back in the day. So we're gonna see how loud these were for those guys. They might've have different fletchings. Did, do you think they rocked? They rocked it literally like this. I bet that's how they shot it. This is probably gonna go pretty low. You yeah, it's a to... full length aluminum arrow. Yeah. I would aim a little higher than you've been aiming. Like top of the block? Yeah, just, or you're not going to high. shoot higher. Probably a little higher than the top of the block. Let's do that. Hopefully they don't miss. That sucker was loud. Next, we have a very neat uh, factory four fletch from a gold tip. I think this is a Q2i vein, I think. Don't quote me on that. Sounded pretty average. This is actually, I feel like, gonna be a pretty quiet combo. It's a super small X vein by Boning, but a four fletch. Uh, that's what I've been running on my four millimeters kind of stock. Definitely quiet, quieter than that gold tip. Okay, now we have a six millimeter arrow with a four fletch tack. Does this tack vein have a name? Do we know what that is? Uh, I believe it's the driver 2.75. There we go, driver 2.75. Don't quote us on that. Pretty quiet. All right, let's go see what we got. Four fletch is peaking right around, I'm gonna say 15. Three fletch is peaking right around 13, 14. Three fletch is slightly louder. Would that make any sense? See, like, one one data point on this, though, is, like, negligible. That's almost not even comparable. No. Three fletch, four fletch, is there a noise difference? Not enough to matter. These, on the other hand. What did we shoot first? Uh, big, the 23 with... Feathers. That's what we shot first. Yeah. 23, then we shot the gold tip, then we shot your arrows, then we shot the tack. Four all together? Yeah, four veins to me? Yeah. Yeah. Four arrows. Oh, four arrows, yes. Yeah. Old school. 
arrow, 23 diameter feathers. Peaks at, I wanna say just a touch under 13, which isn't that much of a difference from a four fletch uh, Max Hunter. Very interesting. It sounded louder though. It sounded like it was a different hiss. It might, it might have been like fuller, if that's even a thing. Next was gold tip four fletch. Peaking right around 18, so pretty quiet. This was mine, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tiny four fletch. Right around like 21. So the quiet, quietest so far out of this. And lastly, we have a four fletch tack vein. That's it's right about 20. So a little bit louder than my tiny little four fletch. And listening through these, big difference from the feathers. Not much of a difference, just listening with the other ones. So you can hear the first two are, the first one is a four fletch, second one is three fletch, then the feathers, and then into the rest of them. Any, it's like any sort of normal vein is so small variant. A feather is ginormously more loud, obviously. A very small sleek vein is obviously, you know, more quiet. Very interesting though. Final thoughts. The biggest thing that I guess I wanted to achieve at this is just to be aware of your fletchings. And if it's really quiet, if it's a quiet small vein, it might not steer your broadheads well. So you might have a really quiet arrow, but then your broadheads are shooting all over the place and you're shooting bad. But a really big vein, like a Blazer or a Max Hunter, that can steer your broadhead really, really well, might be a little louder, but you're shooting really accurate. So it's like pros and cons. As you typically drift towards the smaller, more quieter veins, you're going to lose that forgiveness in steering your arrow and your broadheads. If you're shooting field tips, none of this matters. No one cares how loud your arrow is. Um, most of these veins are gonna steer your arrow just fine. All of them are gonna steer your arrow just fine if you're relatively tuned. Where this matters is in a hunting situation. This matters with broadheads. So like, be, be aware of it. You know, that's something that I'm always aware of. It's like, you wanna be as quiet as possible, but also, you know, as forgiving and allowing your arrow to steer your broadhead as much as possible. So there's an equilibrium point, you know, and that is as quiet as your arrow can get with the correct amount of steering. So if you dive down this rabbit hole, yes, there is some variance between different veins. Obvious, you know, higher, you know, more above the arrow, more material, it's gonna be louder. More sleek, stiffer, smaller veins, obviously gonna be a little quieter. Is it a big difference? No. Is it enough to maybe, you know, gain a couple more yards of arrow flight to the deer before it hears it? Maybe, I guess that's for you guys to, to decide. Final thoughts? Is it worth worrying about? I think what's more worth worrying about is shooting your bow well and knowing that you're going to hit what you're aiming at I think that's more important. I think always the most important thing in anything is literally your form and being able to shoot well. All this stuff is extra, but it's fun. That's a fun little study that we did. We are now scientists. You can call me Dr. Chris now. Riley, how's that sound? Sounds perfect, doctor. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you guys in the next one. See you, bye.